on to blog.com Cause you don't have the time You can focus on your job While we plug, plug, plug for you Check out the website and you Hi, it's Jen Miller, and on today's show, episode number seven of Be Seen Blogging, we'll be talking about long posts versus short posts, the performance test. As someone who has been producing website content for over a decade, I have some definite opinions on what works well. I mainly write for other people on their business or leadership blogs, so I incorporate a variety of styles and lengths, and I really feel the key is to setting the right tone. If you have an engaging style, people will enjoy reading your posts and return to the website regardless of the length. However, since it's a question I do get very often, I wanted to share with you my thoughts on the topic of word count. Before getting too deep on the word count question, there are a few things you should know. One is that readers may visit your website at any time. The second is that search engines will likely crawl the site every three to five days. This means that consistent blog posting wins, regardless of the length. Posting twice per week generally ensures that viewers and search engines will have something new when they visit your website, and that keeps both coming back. For many of our clients, our goal is to deliver twice weekly blog posts to keep their website current. Each post needs to be optimized with at least one keyword phrase to define the topic so it can be recognized by both the reader and the search engines. And I like posts to be at least 200 words. On the internet, you'll see many sites with posts that are 10 times that length, but you'll also see others like Seth Godin, who regularly publishes blog posts under 100 words, and those perform well too. The point in a blog post is to use your words to deliver your message, however many words that message requires. The benefit to a longer post is that you can use more words to clarify and explain, or share case studies, or even use outside material or quotes. A longer post also supports the use of more images, and that can increase engagement. If long articles highlight research, they can be highly valuable. When a post is long simply to fill the page or for the sake of word count, that is a mistake. Many website visitors read posts and pages on mobile devices, and higher bounce rates can occur when the length of the post material doesn't justify the content. I've heard colleagues mention that they skim or only read the block quotes on posts. Both of those tendencies mean your readers leave your site at a speedy rate and most likely are not digesting the content on your site. I found that emails actually get more clicks than longer blog posts, making me believe that the inbox is actually the best place for long-form content. On the other hand, a shorter post may tease information, leading to a viewer seeking more posts on similar topics. Shorter posts can result in more contact form inquiries, too, because readers want details. Shorter posts also look great with video embeds, so they can be a fantastic way to show yourself speaking to your audience or sharing something related that you found valuable. Another benefit of a shorter post is for the writer. Exhausting a topic in one blog post can make it hard to write a follow-up piece, but when you introduce individual concepts in a series of posts, simply by breaking up the same content, you produce more posts and allow each to energize the rest. Plus, let's face it, our society is used to quick thinking and response. We've been trained to have shorter attention spans, accept more interruptions, and read on our devices. All of these drive up the appeal of shorter content. If you look towards traditional media, you'll see a mix of long and short form articles. When I send news releases to newspapers and magazines, the recommendation from editors is to keep it to less than 350 words. And typically, I see 150 word releases that get published in their entirety. You'll also notice that images matter in these publications, sometimes sharing way more of the story than the words do. Your post should ultimately be a mix of long and short content. They should reflect you and what your message requires in the amount of words needed. Share your passion, deliver valuable, actionable information, use bullet points, block text, and headings so that even if your post is long, it doesn't feel that way. 
read through your post out loud and think about what is redundant or if you are missing a key point. If your post takes longer than five minutes to read, consider how you might be able to shorten it up while still delivering the same thoughts. Or think about how a series concept would make sense for that post. Keep your titles short too. Under seven words seems to work best for me. Get clever with how you introduce each post to create titles that really introduce the topic and have fun with it. Blogging is about self-expression, using your voice to share what you know about yourself, about your thoughts, about your company. Yes, it is work and it requires consistency, but ultimately, blogging really is fun. In terms of performance, I'd have to say that whatever word count you can manage on a regular basis is the answer. Consistency is really what wins. I'm Jen Miller and I've enjoyed sharing with you on Be Seen Blogging. Please let me know your questions at needsomeone2blog.com or reach out to me on Twitter at Jen Blogs for you. Like the show? I'd love to see your review on iTunes. Thank you for spending part of your time today with me. Talk to you next week. Need someone to blog.com Cause you don't have the time You can focus on your job While we plug, plug, plug for you Check out the website and you'll see Try it out and become an icon of your industry We will develop a voice for your blogs to connect with your readers